Hi, welcome to these little videos explaining our values for our encouragement ministry or our sharing time ministry. We are, as a church, intentionally um, spending time teaching and praying into the time on our Sunday gatherings where uh, we have room for people to come and share what they believe God is speaking to the church, either through a prophetic word or from a scripture. And so I want to just walk through some passages mainly based in 1 Corinthians to talk about um, why we do this, why we make time for this, what we value about it, and what are some of our expectations for people in this ministry. And I want to start off just by beginning reading at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, where the Apostle Paul takes three or four chapters to talk about spiritual gifts being used in the church. This is one of the best places in scripture to look for instructions from the Bible on how to do this. And so we want to um, hear what God teaches us about these spiritual gifts and then where there are places where we need to make practical applications. We can talk about why we want to do what we want to do. But let's begin. Our sharing time, our encouragement ministry is all about God and his glory. And this is the first thing that the scriptures want us to know about spiritual gifts. It really is all about God. And so this is what Paul says. He says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to mute idols, however you were led. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the spirit of God ever says Jesus is accursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. Now, there are a variety of gifts, but the same spirit, and there are varieties of service, but the same Lord, and the variety of activities, but it's the same God who empowers them all and everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. So from this scripture, there are kind of two things happening that I see in here. The first, the Apostle Paul is addressing a church of, uh, they're energetic, they're kind of proud, um, they are believers, they do lots of speaking in tongues, and they prophesy, and there's lots of expressions of the Spirit's supernatural power in their lives as they gather together as a church, but they have some significant misunderstandings about God. And so Paul starts at a very basic level, and he says, uh, no one is going to dishonor Jesus by the Holy Spirit. So if anybody is getting up and saying anything that diminishes Christ, that leads away from Christ, that, that leads people's hearts away from trust in Christ, that's not the Spirit because um, the gifts of the Spirit are given to bring people to the place where they admit Jesus Christ is Lord. And no one, no one would ever be led to sin by the Spirit. No one would be ever led to deny Christ or say Jesus is accursed by the Spirit. And so as I read this, I don't think this is the biggest compliment to their church that he has to teach them this, but they're getting a bit wild and crazy. And I wonder... I'm not being an exegete here, but I wonder if he thinks there's so much immaturity in their church that someone could actually think that as they're kind of in a rush or feeling like they're being led, they might actually diminish Christ and still claim that they're speaking by the Spirit because it felt like they were. And so Paul starts off with the most basic level of discernment is the gifts of the Spirit will lead people to acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, and it will never lead people to diminish Christ or curse Christ or turn away from Christ. That's the beginning of it. And then he says that spiritual activities, um, they all of our calling to serve God and the power to do it all comes from God. And there's this great uh, Trinitarian expression of this. So this great expression that talks about the Trinity that mentions all three persons of the Trinity. It talks about gifts from the Spirit. It talks about service from the Lord, meaning the Lord Jesus Christ. And it talks about activities that are empowered by God. So you have the Spirit and you have Jesus Christ the Lord and you have God. And um, they empower things. And some people make a big distinction. Some are gifts, some are activities, some are services. As I read this, I don't think that there's hard and fast lines being drawn here. And you can see that as you continue to read the chapter, it's almost like different perspectives on the same thing. So as you're called to share prophetically, in one sense, you can see this is a gift of the Spirit ex expressing itself. If you're called to share ex prophetically, you can also say, this is a service to Christ that I'm doing. And you could also say, this is an empowerment from God the Father to do this activity. It's different perspectives on expressions of God's life coming out of people and 
particularly in this passage, he's going to be talking about supernatural ways. So this is the first value for us, okay? This is the first thing that's going to be our guiding like light and our beacon for our encouragement ministries. Whatever we do, the Spirit is going to lead us to glorify Christ and to honor His name. And anything that kind of diminishes that to make it man-centered or me-centered or to um, diminish Jesus... Um, there's probably something missing, probably an adjustment's needed there. And so we can take this encouragement and just say, as I say yes to participating in the encouragement ministry, as I say yes to um, just surrendering to God, however you want to use me during the sharing time or not, my first desire is that Jesus Christ would be honored and lifted up. Because whatever power or help or empowerment or activity or service comes out of me, it's going to be from the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, on mission to lift up Jesus in the church. So this is the first thing. It's about the glory of Christ. It's about honoring his name. 